Hi, I'm Steve Poppy, horticulture scientist from the West Central Research and Outreach Center. Uh, today I'm going to talk about one of our new research projects uh, that we are going to continue. We've continued through this growing season and into 2021. Um, we've been doing a lot of strawberry research for many, many years, 45 plus years, uh, growing strawberries as June bears. We've had a variety trial with Dr. Jim Luby for many, many years. We've had many varieties that have been developed by the university and over the last about seven or eight years we have looked at day neutral strawberries okay day neutral strawberries are as the name implies day neutral it doesn't matter what length of day a short day long days sunshine whatever else they will initiate fruit buds and will flower and fruit in the same year whereas compared to June bears uh, you plant them, say, in early May of any given season. You uh, groom them and, and hopefully have uh, these large, wide, matted rows. And then they produce their fruit buds in the cool season, in short days of fall, which they're doing right now, uh, the June bears. So, day neutrals are, we actually, they're actually called California day neutrals. They were developed in California. Many of the varieties we are trialing with this system are from California and they do great in, uh, in, in upper Midwest and other areas of the country but uh, they're special and they, uh, they're they probably some of the same strawberries you are eating out of the grocery store right now, those California Day Neutrals. But what we have here uh, is called a tabletop strawberry system and it gets that name from, as you can see, uh, the system is growing at about tabletop height. So great for picking. You don't have to get down on your knees and crawl and pick strawberries like you do with June bears. You can pick these from just a standing position, which makes it very easy, very quick. This tabletop system is these strawberries are growing in a trough. And I can maybe just pick one of these up out of here. There's an individual trough that's three foot long approximately by six inches deep. And we have nine day neutral uh, transplants. They were dormant transplants that were put in here in late April. And so that's one of the other advantages of this system as compared to growing normal strawberries in the upper Midwest. We can put these into a soilless media. There's no black soil in this media that we're growing. It's mostly made out of peat moss. It's specially developed for growing strawberries. But um, we don't have to wait for the soil to dry out, uh, which is over the last many years in Minnesota, we've had wet soils in May. We're always delaying some of our plantings of our agronomic crops and our strawberries. Well, we can put these into the soil with media anytime we want, okay? And put these plants out at almost any time we want. Perennials are, their strawberries are perennials. They can tolerate a light frost. And even if you had flowers on your plants and you had a light frost that freezes them off, that's okay because the flowers are not needed at that time. We remove flowers on these plants with the soil production method, also the same method, uh, till about the, the uh, early July. And then three weeks later, we normally have fruit. Uh, they start, these started producing in about the second or third week in July. But this is unique. Uh, there is a fertigation system, which we'll elaborate on a little bit later in this talk, uh, but they are fed irrigation water through these tubes right here, one on each side, and then off there is this pressure compensated spaghetti tube, which takes this, our fertigation water, our water is fertigated or fertilized every watering, it goes into this system right here, and there are five of those that are spaced evenly uh, amongst those nine plants in this system, in that three foot trough, okay? So they're uniformly watered, and we water them, oh, once to three times a day, depending on how warm it is and whatnot. And we gauge that irrigation scheduling with uh, a tensiometer. And it's a very important tool that is used with this system so we know when to water. Um, it, strawberries don't like to be overwatered, they don't like to be underwatered, they need to be perfect with this type of system. So we monitor the irrigation. There's a gauge on here that goes from zero to 40. Uh, 40 meaning very dry, zero meaning very wet. And we try and keep it somewhere, and it's measured in centibars is the uh, measurement that is used on this attentiometer. We always try and keep it, oh, probably around five. 
or so. Uh, that's uh, and that's uh, been pretty easy for us to maintain with uh, the irrigation scheduling. Um, now, um, this type of system would be great for growers or homeowners if you have um, not enough good uh, soil ground to grow strawberries. You can put this system with this trough and again they're in this gutter system almost like a, um, a rain gutter system that these troughs sit into. Okay, You can put this anywhere. You could put it on an asphalt parking lot if you wanted to or any type of marginal land but uh, that's a great feature of this particular system. Also, I'm really excited about this system because we're not having to deal with weeds, okay? With growing perennial crops of any type or annual weeds or flowers or whatever, you're always having to deal with weeds. Maybe you might use herbicides, but this is a soilless, sterile mixture. There are no weeds. The only weeds we might have to worry about are around the pipes that uh, are, are holding this system up. Okay, um, irrigation, um, the, we're at the end of our, our production season. We're coming to a close here now, so there's still some ripe fruit. We're picking twice a week. Uh, this white band that's across here is, holds these trusses right here, and that keeps the fruit uh, not from draping over the trough where you can't get out to pick. It makes picking so easy uh, where these uh, strawberry trusses are hanging on this white band right here. Um, this system does hold up quite well in the winds of west central Minnesota. We've had, you know, 40, 45 mile an hour winds on occasion this summer. It, uh, the system does move a little bit, but it seems to hold up and we haven't found any of these troughs laying on the ground yet, so it does stand out. Getting back to just a little history on this, um, these particular types of systems uh, this system that we've uh, uh, purchased for this particular tabletop is called a Meteor system. They are located out of Ontario, Canada. They were just really good with us and they were perfect in showing us how to grow these strawberries which was so um, new to us. And so uh, construction of the system I should mention is uh, quite a process but it uh, is all put together, it fastens together the troughs and the, and the gutter system and whatnot um, and we can show that in another video at another time, uh, construction of some of these uh, systems. But uh, we've had some issues with um, water. <clears throat> uh, here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center we have well water, okay? And from our preliminary uh, reports of our uh, looking at our water samples, there was a red flag that was raised because the pH of our well water was a little bit too high. And when I'm talking about pH, it means uh, when your soil or your water uh, talks about being acid. Uh, acid means a lower number, lower than seven. Uh, higher than seven on the pH scale is your soil or your water is more alkaline. And we have in our area, our soils and our water are high in pH and strawberries don't like that. They like it a little bit uh, more acid, say around 6.5. Well, when we put in our normal well water into here, it's probably around 7, 6, 7, 8. Strawberries don't like that, okay? Um, but we were willing to try it with our well water uh, this season and see how the, the plants would react. The plants really did well at first, but then towards the end of the season, uh, and uh, they were starting to show a little bit of chlorosis, uh, chlorosis is just looking at the leaves. You see these dark green veins in the leaves. Uh, they were starting to show a red color. Uh, we didn't know quite what was going on at first, but it was the pH of our well water, which was uh, interfering with uh, uh, satisfactory growing of these strawberries. So what we did is uh, we improvised. We brought in some uh, RO water, some reverse osmosis water that is neutral. It's seven and uh, so we started to use that. That is truly not available for any grower or any homeowner, but, uh, but now we've learned that uh, um, we're short on calcium and magnesium with this system, with the RO water. It doesn't have that in the RO water. Um, in well water, that's, that's found. 
So now we're mixing 50-50 or half and half with our well water and our RO water to see what kind of results we might have. And things are coming along okay. We're still needing to uh, tweak it a bit. Uh, again, this is a whole new experiment, never been researched in the uh, Minnesota, so we're learning a lot. And so, also, we have this project at St. Paul campus. Uh, a graduate student who just started uh, this past week who will be working with us on St. Paul campus under the direction of Dr. Emily Hoover uh, will be working with us on this project over the rest of the year and into next growing season. Um, we also have two other farmer grower sites, one located in Garfield, Minnesota, uh, Jeff and Jane Way, who have been just gracious with us. We've put in uh, a system at their farm but we're looking with theirs, um, we're looking at six different varieties, six different day neutral varieties and see how they do on their farm. Of course, they're using well water, we're running into some uh, uh, issues there. Um, we're also looking at uh, adding sulfuric acid to our well water, which will lower the pH. Uh, we haven't uh, done that quite yet, but we'll be testing that probably this next week. Um, another grower site is uh, Dr. Andy Petron, who, um, an interesting guy who became a grower, uh, got his PhD at the University of Minnesota. I did some uh, of his uh, uh, thesis work with uh, day neutral strawberries way back in about 2013, 2014, but he became a grower. So he has this system, but he's on an organic farm. And so we're growing these day neutral strawberries in this table stop system in an organic mix. Um, we also have, as part of our treatments, we're growing 12 troughs in an organic mix and 12 troughs in a non-organic mix. And we're not done with the data yet, but we're seeing from the organic mix not as good a productivity as the traditional mix. And also we're growing two different varieties, Albion and Cabrillo. And initially Cabrillo was just uh, doing quite well as compared to Albion. We'll see what comes uh, when we come down to our fi final yield data what uh, what happens there but uh, Cabrillo again was doing quite well um, let's go from here let's talk a little bit about the fertigation system we're going to talk about uh, the water system which is very important as we inject uh, the proper amount of water and fertilizer into this system uh, behind me is a tank uh, a 50 gallon tank where we're currently using well water, uh, we're not using city water at this time, uh, I'll elaborate a little bit more on that in a minute, uh, but it is injected through a just an electrical pump uh, into our system here and it uh, makes its way through the system, watching the pressure and amount that's going through and we inject that uh, fertilizer solution through this injector, this mix right injector and it's uh, calibrated at uh, parts per million. And so we've got that down to a 1 to 100 ratio right now with injecting our fertilizer solution. I won't talk much about, about the fertilizer. We're still learning about that, what the proper types of fertilizer and nutrients we should be adding to these tabletop system of strawberries. So, but uh, the mix right is just, we're just sucking out of this five gallon pail right here with a screen on the end, uh, the proper ratio of uh, uh, water soluble fertilizer. Uh, but uh, when the, the fertilizer water goes through these tubes and through these lines, it, uh, it dribbles at a very slow rate with this injector. There are five of these per trough. The trough, again, is three foot long, six inches deep. Uh, each one of these admit, uh, emits that water. And, uh, and then it only takes about, say, five to ten minutes of an irrigation cycle to thoroughly uh, drench the, the strawberries and the roots and the media and then um, we measure again that pH and uh, that also which is important that EC or electrical conductivity which measures soluble salts salt levels if they're too high are really bad for strawberry roots so we measure that we've been successful with keeping that rate fairly low but as the water goes through the media through the uh, soilless media, the peat-like mix, uh, it comes out the other end as what we call leachate. And we also monitor that with a tester for pH and EC to see what that is after it's went through the media. So uh, we record that, 
and uh, try and come up with the, the best ratio of all those nutrients and pH and EC that we can to grow uh, successfully this system in a tabletop system growing these in the troughs.